Hi everyone, Peter here. Got a video sponsored by Squarespace, which was going to be an unboxing video of this pencil. I think I've had one of these pencils before. Maybe someone sent me one. I don't know where the old one is, but I recently went to a local, uh, little like boutique shop with like, uh, got like pretty little plants and like little gifts and stuff. And I found a version of it that came in a box and I did, I just did this wonderful unboxing. It was so cute, charming, funny, very watchable. Uh, but I forgot to hit record on any of my cam cameras. So that's on me. Anyways, this is a pretty cool, I mean, just pretend you saw it. Just absorb that energy from the universe. It's out there somewhere. It just didn't go into my cameras. It's a pretty cool pencil. It's a mechanical pencil, but mo when most mechanical pencils, you know, they have like 0 0.5, 0 0.7 millimeter lead, which is actually graphite. I know people keep correcting me on that, but I keep calling it lead because everyone knows what you're talking about. Um, see, you can see there, it comes out pretty nice and thick. Oh yeah. And the nice thing about this is it actually has this real wood exterior. You don't usually get that combination of a mechanical pencil with the smell of a real wooden pencil. So that's a nice mashup for me personally. Um, I don't remember what else I said about this. Oh yeah, I spent some time uh, trying to spin the back of this to see if it would come apart and nothing happens. It doesn't come apart unless, I don't know, I don't want to pull too hard on it. It just seems like you're supposed to push it. Also, a nice plus of this pencil, um, in, in, in comparison to most other mechanical pencils I've had, is the eraser, okay? It's got a nice, big, beefy eraser if I feel like erasing things, because usually um, mechanical pencils that I have, they come with very tiny little erasers like this, which I never use because, hey, if I use this tiny little eraser, it's just gone. And I guess I could order other tiny little erasers to replace it as some kind of special order. I don't even know where I get those. I mean, I could probably find them if I searched. But this one, here's the little plastic thing that came inside the box. And I, you know, when I wasn't recording, I pulled it out and I was like, I was doing sound effects. Uh, but here you can see it came with three replacement erasers. Adorable. Look at those. So I'll be much less bashful to use the built-in eraser uh, than having to resort to like a little, you know, I mean, I love this eraser too, but I mean, maybe I won't even have to do any erasing. We'll see. Uh, what else? Um, oh yeah, it came with a, a pack of lead refills. Pretty cool. Let's draw. Put on your drawing cap. Droop. Draw in the whole universe, all of its energy and ideas. Allow it all in as much as you want, as much as you can, the good, the bad. And then channel it down your arm, through the pencil, and onto the paper. Who knows what will happen? Before we get started, let's check out the beautiful and bountiful world of Squarespace. They can help you get started hosting, designing, and setting up your own website in every way that you need. And you can go a lot of different directions with this, whether you just want a place to display your art, they got a lot of different gallery options, sell your art or things you've been making, or as some kind of hub for your business. They've got e-commerce options, and I use the e-commerce options on my website through Squarespace. It's very cool. It's all automated as far as sending customers like email confirmations on things you've shipped, uh, and like sending them download links if they're buying digital files. It's awesome. So go check it out at squarespace.com for a free trial. And then when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash peterdraws for 10% off your first website or domain. All right, I have something else extremely important and pressing I want to talk to you about. But first, let me say a few words about these drawings I'm doing here today with this weird, big, 
um, kind of hybrid mechanical pencil. Uh, look, I I found this sketchbook. I think someone gave it. A friend gave it to me for my birthday a while ago. It's this cool leather bound uh, sketchbook, and it, I chose it mostly because I had been feeling different types of papers and different types of sketchbook and I sketchbooks that I have lying around, and I wanted one with a little more tooth. My main gripe. My main problem with this mechanical pencil is the lead that came with it, okay? If I was going to keep using this mechanical pencil, I would have to get different lead for it. Because this lead, there's something off about it, okay? This graphite, I mean, okay? It's a little bit too hard. And I don't know, maybe it's more than that. It's just kind of... It doesn't got a lot of oomph. I like a lead that's a little bit softer, which, which if you don't know, uh, softer lead means more of it comes off on the paper, which means it makes darker lines, right? I just found myself, like sometimes I was white knuckling the pencil, pressing really hard, trying to make darker lines, trying to get more contrast. I mean, really, the best thing is to have a few other a few options. And I know you can go on websites, you know, like jetpens.com or whatever, and you can, uh, you know, any of these stationary websites, and you can get, you know, like two millimeter leads in all sorts of different, I don't know if you call them calibers, but different hardnesses, right? And um, so if I wanted to keep using this, I would. Like I have some five millimeter mechanical pencils, and I have different hardnesses of lead for that, and my my... 0.5 millimeter mechanical pencils. I've got different hardnesses of lead for those. Uh, so if I was going to keep using this one, I think I would shop around and get some. I just need more options, more more ranges, because the where this lead lies, I don't really like this hardness. Anyways, what I was doing here, I've got ten. I'm doing ten quick drawings. Most of these drawings took me anywhere from between four to eight minutes. And I was just scribbling fast, okay? Sometimes it's good to sit down and make a, a slow, careful, considered, you know, like aiming for a masterpiece type of a drawing. But these, my goal was, half the time I was, like the lines I were drawing were almost like reflexive, instinctual. My goal was to try to keep my hand almost ahead of my brain. Because sometimes my brain is the thing that gets in the way when I'm drawing. And that's... I don't really know how to describe it. But yeah, these are quick, just fast, like almost frustrated drawings. Right? Sometimes it's good to get those out of the way. And then you can find things in your own drawings. You can flip back through them and be like, ooh, I liked that. Like I never would have thought to do that. And you can, if you do 10 drawings in the time you would have done one drawing, I think you can find yourself taking a few leaps ahead, right? Because if you do one drawing, you're like, well, I did one drawing and you could feel okay with it or not. Or you could do 10 drawings that you know weren't supposed to be amazing, but you can look back at all 10 of those fast scribbly drawings and you know, take little things away from each 10 of those. I don't know. Maybe that makes sense. Maybe it doesn't. Take it or leave it. I like doing this exercise every now and then. It's be <laughs> It's good to do it maybe when you've had a couple cups of coffee because then you're feeling extra, you know, scribbly. You already kind of have the jitters. So, I mean, that's my opinion. A little bit of um, performance-enhancing drugs there, you know, very mildly, okay? I'm not trying to tell you to do anything crazy. Um, but the crazy, the important thing I wanted to talk to you about today was, look, I was driving to the gas station this morning to buy a honey bun, and I swerved, because in the middle of the road, crossing the road, was a fuzzy caterpillar, and I didn't hit it. My, I straddled it with my the wheels of my car, but it, it didn't. I don't. I don't. I don't know if it even noticed me there. My car, something like ten thousand times its side, vrooming over it. Right, this fuzzy cat. I don't know if you have fuzzy, fuzzy caterpillars where you live, but I think they. I don't know. I think they turn into some kind of moth or something. 
but it seems like at some time of year they kind of come out and they crawl on things and across roads. But I'm just trying to figure out if it, like, did the did the fuzzy caterpillar know that it was crossing a road? Like, did it say, "Hey, it can't"? Did it come to the edge of the road after wandering through the forest? of grass that was the lawn next to the road and say, hey, I think I'm going to spend the next hour or two hours, four hours. I don't know how long it takes a caterpillar to cross a road. Am I going to spend the, the afternoon crossing this road and hope that cars don't hit me? I feel like they're, do they even have a brain or is it just some weird connections of nerves or something? Was it, is it more just they operate on some some base level instincts like are they just kind of moving on like really like like are they just like hey i need to go this direction i don't know why i'm just kind of following my nose following my heart sort of thing right like, why was the caterpillar crossing the road? And I don't mean that. And why did the chicken cross the road? Hey, maybe maybe that joke, why did the chicken cross the road? Maybe it didn't start out as a joke. It started out as a legit philosophical question. Because I had chickens for a while when I lived out in the middle of nowhere. And none of my chickens ever crossed the road. And I always, more than wondering why the chicken crossed the road, I always wondered why the chickens didn't cross the road. They never left my yard, even though they were free-range chickens. Somehow they, somehow they knew my property lines. But we're, but this caterpillar, did it just, is it, if it's just operating on like base level instinct, like thinking in that direction, across the road lays something that would make its life better in some way or you know is there food or resources or a mate or something over there or there was like more light or some scent or something over there that made it want to crawl in that direction i'm guessing a lot of these whatever would made it crawl in that direction that instinct developed before giant asphalt roads were a thing before cars that could squish it were a thing and usually it could have been crawling through the grass and uh wouldn't be open to assault by cars and birds as easily anyways what i'm also wondering is the way that i'm asking questions about this worm and wondering if it even knows what it's doing or even has a conscious experience experience of the decisions it's making i wonder if there's other some other higher level being in the in existence that's asking similar questions about us right is is that is that a common thing that i bet i bet people have wondered that before like there's no way that like if a if a fuzzy caterpillar can't even understand that it's crossing a road there's no way they could even understand the concept of humans i wonder if there's people i wonder if there's roads that we can't even understand that we're crossing you know all right I'm going too deep aren't i thanks for listening hope you like my my 10 scribbles um, I think they're, you know, none of them were masterpieces, but none of them were meant to be. And I think sometimes I get annoyed that I'm drawing the same thing over and over again. And some of it does reappear in these drawings, but then sometimes there are some new things in these drawings too. And I think, oh, I can take these and maybe work those into future drawings just to mix, thing, mix things up a little bit. And, I don't know, and sometimes it's okay if my drawings, it's okay if my drawings look like they were all drawn by the same person because they were, okay? All right. And also, 
Also, I, before I started doing these 10 drawing, this 10 drawing exercise for this video, I was trying to draw some other stuff. I was trying to draw something a little bit more, you know, like polished and perfect, like I was saying. But then I went and did started doing this and I was like feeling a little bit guilty that I wasn't doing something a little more polished and perfect. But then I told myself, hey, this is okay because I'm having fun doing this. So don't beat yourself up. If, uh, you know, you're not taking the, you know, biggest bite of the pie, is that, a, I don't know, I might be mixing two metaphors there or something, but if you're having fun with your art, if that's enough to get you doing something, anything, then uh, go for it, okay? Because I was having fun scribbling. It was a great time. All right, see you all later. Bye. Have a good one.